All right, hold on, hold on. Huh? 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 Huh?
the pig stealing eggs, start seeing the birds attacking the pigs, using a slingshot to sling themselves across to knock down buildings, all that stuff, it's in there. A lot of the game elements are shoehorned into this movie, but you knew it was coming, so it's kind of expected, you're not surprised. But some of the other stuff in this movie was actually more than what I expected from this thing. But it ain't perfect. It still falls back into those traps that you see in so many bad animated films. I'm talking about the unnecessary dance sequences, the pop culture references and catchphrases that are two years too late, and using real world music in a fantasy world of birds. Okay, help me out here. If you hear the song Wild Thing, in an Angry Birds movie, does that mean that a human Tone Loke is singing the song or a bird version of Tone Loke is singing it? When you hear Rick Astley never gonna give you up, are you getting Rick rolled or egg rolled? I don't know, kinda takes you out of the film. Although, I gotta give any animated movie credit that figures out a way to use the song Whoop, whoop, that's the sound of the beast. Whoop, whoop, that's the sound of the beast. <laughs> that's in this movie, I'm serious. <laughs> wow, man, Angry Birds movie is lit. <laughs> that catchphrase is not in the movie, but I'm pretty sure it'll be used in the sequel. And the other major problem is for this to be an Angry Birds movie, the Angry Birds aren't really that angry. Josh Gad is Chuck. He's basically a bird version of Sonic the Hedgehog. And Danny McBride does a good job as Bomb, the bird that blows up all the time. They're funny characters, but they're not really angry. Jason Sudeikis as Red has a couple of angry moments, but he's mostly ill-tempered and sarcastic. Red in this movie kind of reminds me of Grumpy from the Care Bears or Grouchy from the Smurfs. He's not angry or mean enough. He's just less smiley than the others. It's just kind of weird when the not talking angry birds from the game cut scenes are actually more angry looking than the talking birds in the feature length movie. But just being honest, the big thing that other video game movies could learn from angry birds is how to advertise yourself. This movie was everywhere with advertisement. Even if you've never played Angry Birds or know about video games at all, you knew this movie was coming out. When I reviewed Ratchet and Clank, some of the comments I got back was, oh, this is a movie? I didn't even know this was happening. When did this come out? Oh, it's already out? Oh, it's already gone from theaters? Whoops, too busy playing the game. I didn't realize it. Video game movies I still feel like are trying to cater and advertise to the audience that plays games, most of which are actually fine just playing the games because they lose the interactivity by seeing the movie. For video game movies to truly succeed in the future, I think they're gonna have to not just think about their core fan base, but instead find a happy medium to please the core fan base, but more so please that mainstream audience that just wants to see a good movie, and that could lead them to box office success. It worked for comic book movies, right Marvel? Follow the source material? Sometimes we trying to make bank, baby. Sorry fanboys, but mom and pop America still will pay that money if we're like, oh, this looks interesting, who's in it? And that's why just like the birds, many nerds are really, really angry. Thank you for subscribing to my YouTube channel to watch my reviews and other videos. I love you like a play cousin, I'm Audi 5000, slingshot, yelp. <laughs>